Hello, everybody! Hello! Everyone, this is my darling friend, Madame Askew, and I am so excited to welcome her to my office and uh, our, my first co-live ever. And I'm so happy to be here at your, your writer's lounge. My, yes, it's my, uh, my relaxing abode. Oh, and there's Frankie. Hello, Frankie, darling. Hello, hello, hello. hello, hello. Nice right. to meet all of you. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, Madame Askew is possibly more fond of tea than even I am. Oh. Oh, I don't know if that's possible. I feel like we're, we're right at the same place on tea. <laughs> all right, all right. We're right at the same place, but perhaps you are slightly less... Picky? I, I am, am possibly. <laughs> I will drink just about any tea except Lipton. Oh, swell. See, mm. see, so mm -hmm. definitely less picky. Because mm. I have a long list of teas I will not will not drink. So can you guys hear us okay? We're a little I'm a little further away than <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Right. Uh, we're a little further away. I hope you can hear. I think we're both pretty good at projecting. I think so. Um so Yes, all right. It sounds like you guys can hear Perfect. us. Great. So we have a tea to try today. So good. It's from one of you. It's Ooh. from Sally. Ooh. So Sally gave this to me at a dun 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 obvious for obvious reasons. Um and it is a high mountain oolong. There is the I don't know if you can read that label, but there it is. And so we're sampling it today. The the bouquet is gorgeous. It is a very fancy tea. It's lovely. And there's leaves. And there's leaves. There's big leaves when you brew it fresh. It's really quite remarkable. Leaves so, for days. So we are going to have this oolong in front of you for the first time. Here we go. All ready? Right, ready. All right. Ready. Oh, that's lovely. It is really different. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. You, uh, do you drink oolongs on any kind of regular basis? Not, not as much as I should. Do oh, you okay. drink oolongs? I do. <laughs> I do drink oolongs on a regular basis. This is the first steep. Yes. So you know the joy, the magic of oolongs yes. as they change. They do. They evolve with each. Yeah. No, but it's very almost buttery. It is. It has a um, an umaminess to it, like yeah. a almost savory kind of to toasted, toast, toasty tea. It is a bit <laughs> toasty tea. It's actually, I'd call it a bit... Caramel? Is there caramel yeah, notes to it? There is. It's sort of got a, a almost creamy caramel thing going on. And um, it's uh, it's actually got a strong flavour for an oolong. Yeah. It's lovely, but it's stronger than I'm used to. Yeah, I might have over it a little bit. No. <laughs> it might be my bad. No, you know, it's not bitter. It isn't bitter. So There's a know. little tannic to it. There's a little briskness to mm. it. It's not very bright though, it's not very acidic at all. No, it's lovely. All right. <laughs> you know what it'd be quite good with is um, some red bean paste. Yes, you can see it with one of those little, uh, the little pancakey ones with the red bean. And yes, yes, I can. Yes, we can. Absolutely. <laughs> so, but well, I, I, I find it quite pleasant. Yes. Yeah, I quite like it too, actually. Mm. It's really nice. Doesn't taste very high in caffeine. No. But, you know, no. needs must, right? Right. No, I mean, <laughs> and if we killed seven pots, we'd be fine. We'd be fine. Yes. So what is your normal tea of preference? So normally I'm a Darjeeling drinker, which you yeah. know. Yes, you know. we've had discussions about Darjeelings. Darjeelings yeah. are not, they're not my favorite. No. And various tea aficionados have taken me to task for this because they are, among the blacks, considered one of the, the better teas. They do have they a really moniker are. that may be a bit overblown. People call them <laughs> the champagne The champagne of teas. Of teas. Yes. But I do actually think the oolong tradition is more um, more storied, mm. more developed. So if I'm going to judge a tea house by its very traditional single oh, leaves, I will judge it by an oolong often. Oh, really? Real? That is very interesting. So. I will judge, if I'm going to judge purely based on a tea with no milk in it and that sort of level, mm. I, will, I will go for a white. Oh. I, I will judge on a white. Uh, yeah, because no. we've discussed how delicate they are, and I kind of like that delicacy. I want to taste complexity without being uh, my having my taste buds like, attacked, and I feel like a white is the best vehicle into that. That is a really good choice, and also I would never put milk with a white tea. No, of course not. No, no, that'd be terrible. That'd be terrible. <laughs> or with an oolong. For no, that I, <laughs> I won't sweeten them either. Although no. some people will sweeten their oolongs. It's 
personal preference. Uh, no, it's but. it's abominable. <laughs> I can't abide sweetened. But then you know how I feel. I can't abide sweetened tea. Period. Shocking behavior. But um, but my don't. my customary leaf is an Assam, which is a which is a basic black for anyone who's interested. No, but Assam mm. is like a beautiful black tea. It is. It is a very round, malty. It is it is the Malteser whopper of the <laughs> of the tea world. Absolutely. It has a very yeah. I think Assam is a, a lovely sort of warm, gentlemanly tea. It invites you into the library, it offers <laughs> you a good book, a nice fire, <laughs> some treats. It's just a lovely it's tea. It's kind of the whiskey of the tea world. Um, <laughs> Maybe you're not wrong. Um <laughs> although I think all tea is sort of whiskey of tea worlds because they're so affected by the processing rather That's than true. the base material. It's true. Yeah. It is it is it is amazing so many such a range comes from just this one plant, right? That's always been fascinating to me with tea. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I like to taste single leaf so much because I feel like or like this which is a source blend treated in a specific way because I don't know, it's already so complex. I don't feel it necessarily has to be mixed with fruits or bergamot or you know no. any of that kind of thing well you're not you're not a fan of the bergamot I'm, I'm, i know which is by the way i mean i'm also not that keen on it i'm very particular if i'm going to drink an earl grey cream well oh sorry i've given myself away an earl grey period <laughs> i prefer the earl grey cream because i don't care for the assertiveness of the bergamot it's very aggressive and most of it you can taste that it's chemical and not the real thing. I have to say, I also blame Jean-Luc Picard for the oh. American fascination yes. with Earl Grey, because mm. I'm like, it's all Star Trek The Next Generation's fault. It's his American sin. Yeah. <laughs> I blame Earl Grey on Jean-Luc Picard. Absolutely. <laughs> no, that is the thing. People have heard about it. They've seen a wonderful character drink it. Yes. And he is a very lovely character and, you know, responsible for many... Romantic choices <laughs> in my life, <laughs> but, um, but but there are other wonderful teas. Yes, and that is not top of my pack. So perhaps this tea chat with Gail and Madame Askew is simp or Miss Gail, I suppose. Should use our proper names. Right. Yes, yeah, very proper. <laughs> is is just a cry out to all of you watching to try a range of teas. Absolutely, uh, give some other leaves a try. I actually have to do a shout out for cumin, which I also really really love. Oh, which I is love a, a good cumin. Good cumin is really something special, which is a black tea, but a very delicate, very delicate black gorgeous tea. Gorgeous black tea. Yeah. Um, you can get good ones at a few Chinese tea houses. Yeah. But if you find yourself in Tucson. <laughs> Rare, though that might be. Tucson. Tucson. <laughs> we have an excellent Chinese tea house that imports all of their teas, mm. um, seven cups, and um, they work directly with the tea growers to, yeah. to import some very spectacular tea. I, uh, I had a tea flight tasting, mm. I was telling mm. Madame Skew earlier, um, at, a, at a tea house in England, and I, I think this is the most exciting thing in the world, and I want every tea house to start doing this, where you can sample flights of tea as if they so were beers perfect. or wines. Like so why, good. Why would that not be the case? And then you could try all these different leaves. I think that's very exciting, but sadly not as common as I would like. No, but that is like definitely my jammy dodger right there. <laughs> the flights of tea. And now I just want to go to that place specifically. <laughs> to try it. To do the flights. <laughs> The Grand Arbiter and I were already looking for some tea houses, a few, <laughs> whilst we are there. And that one is now on the it list. It has to be. Fortnum and Mason's is what I am alluding to, which is in London. Um, alias Tum Tums is, is my preferred larger fancy tea house. And the last time I was there, at least, they did offer a tea flight tasting a sample as part of their high tea service. So... E. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I think I think that's just went on the list. Um, so yeah. let let us talk a little bit about Madame Askew for those of you who do not know this wondrous person here. Madame Askew and I are friends out of the uh, steampunk community, that's and right. I am, was trying to remember when we met. Was it in San Diego? It was in San Diego. I think that was what four or five years ago. Yeah, now. it was a little while ago. Yes, right. Madame Askew runs Tea Dueling, and if you do not know what Tea Dueling is. Uh, you are in for an absolute treat. Uh, you can go onto YouTube and take a look 
and there will be examples of what tea dueling is, and it is my favorite sport in the world. <laughs> I can just sit and watch tea dueling forever. It's hilariously funny. Uh, it involves soggy biscuits. You all know how I feel about a soggy biscuit. Well, they are a crime against humanity. They are a crime against humanity, but also they are a, vehicle, a weapon of mass destruction. They are, and um, a definite vehicle for humor. Yes. Uh, a lot of comedy. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Surprisingly it, funny. Yes. Teacup, soggy biscuit. You had no idea. I'm certain. I think they do have an idea. Uh, it does enter my books regularly. Good. Yeah, maybe. The, in finish. the in the next book, the the last custard protocol book, there is a, a near war is started by dunking a biscuit. <gasps> I know. <laughs> oh, there was a big. That was a big spoiler. Spoiler alert. Sorry. So exciting. <laughs> I think we're all going to read it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean... I'm not giving too much away. Like, what else secret. would start a war in one of my books but a soggy biscuit, really? I'm, it's perfectly reasonable. <laughs> Absolutely reasonable, as far as I'm concerned. The only other thing might be spilt tea. At spilt, the yes. Oh. That also that also happened. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Shocking! <laughs> so, yes, I... So, yes, that's I how we it. met. Yeah, <laughs> no, and I admit that I have been reading your books since... The first publication of the very first book. Oh my goodness! So I'm a long time reader. Oh, excellent! And um, <laughs> representing for the long time readers, Madame Askew. <laughs> and I host book club in in the Sonoran Desert, where I am, you know, stranded forever. <laughs> and uh, we have read one of your books every year. Oh, I am so honored. Yeah, I am truly honored. This year it's two. Well, I know. Just, all the gale, all the time. All the gale, all the time. <laughs> that is that is very exciting. No, we yeah. are of course reading your your latest one when it comes out. Yeah, so that's this one. Anybody who hasn't seen the this is the UK cover, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry for some reason Facebook, in its usual infinite wisdom, has decided to not let me rotate so you can see them. But basically, you get to see what Percy looks like. Isn't he cute? He's so uh, cute. And this is what Percy look, looks like for me, anyway. Uh, the American cover is what Percy looks like for my American publisher. <laughs> but I like this Percy. I, I rather like a, a stuck-up, snobbish schoolboy Percy, I have to say. Um, and the eagle eye amongst you, which I am hoping you are numbered among, will notice that he is in Regency garb. I did notice yes, that. Yes, he ought to be in 1890s late Victorian garb. That is... That is not 1890s Victorian. So one of Madame Askew's other major talents is that she is a fantastic costumer and seamstress. Thank you. Truly Thank you. amazing. If you are a craftsperson of any kind and interested in, in seamstressing, you should check out some of her live videos because Thank she you. does these great, great, like, in the seamstress's studio videos. Me um, too. Yeah, anyway, so yes. Percy is, is in the wrong period attire. I was wondering about yes. that, but I'm always game. I'm yes. to follow and, this story. And there's also the... Everybody, I think, is well aware at this juncture that occasionally the cover art doesn't exactly... Whoever is picking the cover art doesn't necessarily know the exact period that's inside the book. Right, yes. right. We've all seen this, especially with, with historical oh, romances. No, yes, yeah, yeah, no. Zippers, it's, it can get... Grim. Uh, but, so, yeah. yes, so secretly for you and Madame Askew, when I got my American cover and I saw that he had Regency garb on the American cover, which I don't have a copy of yet, but he does, um, I actually wrote an entire scene and a plot point into the book around the fact that he is in very outdated dress. And so, uh, and so then when I was putting together this cover, I had to find Regency as well. So, so it is. It is a big deal. The clothing on the cover. That's so. beautiful. It's very exciting for me. Yes, that it was really lovely. fun. It was really fun to write. I was. I was sort of like, well, that is. That is. That is fifty years off. <laughs> Unexpected, but all right. You know, it is steampunk. Yes. Almost anything is possible. That's true. That's true. You're very generous in your definition of steampunk. Well, I mean, I'm. I'm including time travel. I'm just assuming. <laughs> You could go back to the Regency era. And oh my God! The last thing I need is time travel <laughs> opened up to me in my universe. <laughs> I think that's unlikely. Uh, I have deeply, like, archaeologically weird paradox concerns with time travel when almost any author tackles it. And science fiction show. I'm thinking about Star Trek, <laughs> for example. But the paradox issues are numerous. Like, how? I don't. How do you handle it? Do you? Yeah. But if you leave behind a footprint forever yeah. for an archaeologist to find yes. later, 
yes, butterfly effect, all that stuff. So uh, I'm not rule. I never, you guys know this. I never rule anything out about writing, but it seems I, I find it unlikely I will handle time travel. Sorry. <laughs> I was um, I was thinking that would be a surprising thing. But <laughs> yeah. I haven't read it yet, so possible. Yes. Well, anyway, uh, enough about that. What else? Were we, what are, what oh, other tea, tea things shall we tea. talk about? Tea. So, um, yes. So you're you're an oolong. You use oolong to test a tea I house. do. I. But your daily tea? Usually, I do a Darjeeling. Um, sometimes I'll do a pu'er. Mm. Very keen on pu'ers. <gasps> do you not care for them? No. Well, they they are an acquired <laughs> taste. So in San Andreas Shifter, um, so uh, Madame Skew has also yes. read my San Andreas Shifter series. All of them. All of them. And in that series, there is a werewolf who is a lover of Puer. That's true. Brian. Yeah. And uh, and Brian describes drinking Puer. He drinks Puer because he is a real man. <laughs> he is a manly tea, as far as Brian is concerned. I describe, and I think Max or someone else in the book describes Puer as... Um, eating one of the peat bog people from northern uh, Scotland. <laughs> like, I also oh. drink Lefroig, so... Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I'm willing like, to go. Oh. Well, do you drink... Sm is Lefroig smoky as well, or just Lef peaty? It's, it's peaty and very smoky. Okay, so do you drink Russian Caravan or Lapsang Sushan or the smoky teas? Yeah, no, I will in, when I'm in the mood. Wow. When I'm in... But those are like... I need to be in a mood. Those are a statement tea. They are. Yeah. They they are not shy wallflowers at all. No, they're like looking out a fireplace. Frankly, they, they can be <laughs> to <laughs> me. Absolutely. <laughs> more. I'm more of a Highland Park drinker. So also in my teas, I like something not so in your face as like a lapsang sushan. Lapsang sushan is strong. Beautiful, real, but real strong. <laughs> in the dead of winter when I'm experiencing existential I could, dreads. Yes, I could see that. I, if you're having like a, a like a po kind of evening, you drink a lot of sex That's with exactly po. <laughs> Because literature and tea pairings. That's right, <laughs> so with your books, I like a good assam. Yes, they're made. They're, they're, a, they're a hearty breakfast book. They right, are. like uh, my mm. books ought to be at least, uh, at least I feel like when I'm writing them, they're kind of like a British breakfast. They're sort of a little over the top, a lot of fried stuff, delicious, <laughs> so and the best tea to go with them Absolutely. is a malty English breakfast because that's kind of what they're. Oh no, it's perfect. Written for. But and I have at last had your favorite English breakfast tea, the strong, the seventeen oh six. Yes, I have. Oh, what did you think? Well, well. Consider me a convert. Oh, yay! It's so good. It's really good. It was <laughs> lovely. It's possibly too drinkable because you just, at least I never remember to stop. I mean, and then I'm like eight cups in and bouncing off the walls. <laughs> Which is all right. It's all right. Yes. I mean, that's the life I live. So <laughs> it's bouncing off the wall, eight cups in. Oh, oh, eight pots. In. <laughs> oh, no. That's a lot. That's it is a lot. But I have definitely had seven and eight pot days. days. Wow. When I have deadlines and costumes to do, wow. I just keep drinking my brown beddy full of summer <laughs> tea, usually something quite stiff and black, um, and a tea variety. <laughs> so. Well, so we are, I don't know how, oh, I don't have a time, so I, we're also at odds with what time it is. Um, yeah, no, no idea. That's all right, but I did, this is the other thing I promised everybody, is that we would try the Guinness, so these are Guinness rich chili potato chips. They are uh, gluten-free and uh, vegan, apparently, and they, they come from the UK. And I promised everybody that I, I I posted about them, and that I said I wasn't going to to I was going to eat them in public. So this is proof that I have not tried them yet. And that, that is a little, it's a little little man. Here we go. Oh God. Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Those these don't smell good, you guys. No. They, they smell a little like wet dog, a little bit like 
wet beans, like the the bot, like after you've opened the can of beans, emptied it out, rinsed them out, that smells like that. Yeah, no. I'm gonna do this for you though. Beans on toast. <laughs> So here it is. Looks like a perfectly innocent Guinness chili potato chip. And I think they mean chili like a bowl of bean chili chili, right? But made with Guinness. Here we go. Actually, they're not that bad. They're better <laughs> than the, the smell. They're better than their smell. They are very beany. They taste like... So we just came from Burmese food, which is why I didn't, I couldn't give you a set time for this live because we had to go eat. We had to all gorge ourselves on Burmese food. I, I'm sure you understand. It was a terrible burden. It was a terrible burden. But one of the things that Burmese food uses often is chickpea powder. And this just tastes like it has like black bean powder oh. on it or kidney bean powder on it. So it's just like a potato chip with bean powder on it. I am not getting any Guinness. Would you Would you like to? I will to, try, you one. try one. I will try one of these. We have the rest of our oolong so we can clear our palates if we need to. Oh. Really, they smell way worse than they taste. No, they do. They have like slightly sweet beans. Yeah, like Heinz baked beans powdered mm, and sprinkled yeah. on a potato chip. No, that's... Oh, yeah. there's a tiny bit of spice. There's a, got a little bit there. But not, not a lot. So there it is. It's yeast giving it that... Oh, and there's sugar. Mmm. That's, That's why it's sweetness. sweet. And paprika and onion and barley malt. Mmm. Well, there it is. So, if you like beans sprinkled on potato chips, you can try and find them. I found them at, um, where did I find them? I found them at, a uh, Ross, Dress for Less, because that's where you should go for your quality potato chip. Um, How could you resist that, though? I mean... I couldn't. Like, I saw the Guinness on the potato chip, and I was like, I have to try that. But I think someone else said they found them at Cost Plus or something like that. So I, I'm getting yes, that yes, little it was, chili. It's no. terrible anticlimactic. I expected them to be something more than I expected to taste the Guinness more, but I couldn't taste no Guinness at all. Not a not a jot. Not a jot. Mm. So there's that. So that was exciting. I'm sorry, it was sort of disappointing everybody. Uh, that, that, that <laughs> aroma? The aroma really doesn't smell good. <laughs> Gonna have to drink some of this, which has a wonderful aroma, I have to say. This mm. smells better than it tastes. <laughs> it's very vanilla caramel smelling. No, the the bouquet of this is wonderful. It's a gorgeous smelling blend. I would use it as a perfume if I wore such things. Yes, I could see that. That'd be lovely. Yeah, now, that would but, be a really nice perfume. But it's um, it is buttery. It does have a lovely flavor. It's got the caramel and stuff. Yeah. But it's not an oolong that I might um, subsist off of for eternity. I think it's a better occasion tea than Absolutely. it is a regular. Yeah. And good with food, I suppose. Yeah, actually. It was actually... It's, it's not bad with the beans. <laughs> no. no, it was a perfect accompaniment. <laughs> Would you like more in your... No, I think I'm good. All right, good. Yes. Excellent. So what, what time... We, we, we could take a couple of questions if anybody has any, like, raging questions they wish to ask, specifically about tea, since it's tea time, apparently. It is tea time. Um, it's a lifestyle choice. <laughs> <laughs> Tea or bean potato chips? I mean um, both, maybe. <laughs> um, everyone is very chatty. You're, oh, the teacups are gorgeous. Thank you. They are uh, the work of many years and uh, very nice people giving them to me, mostly. <laughs> they are lovely teacups. Yeah, I have a good collection. Um, yeah. And I was quite delighted with this beauty. I like to, I like to collect different teacups so that when I have guests, people can... Pick whatever they feel in the mood for, so far as a teacup goes, you know, and also then they know which teacup is theirs. Very helpful. <laughs> I used to have a vast collection. I used to throw big tea parties and like my mom's back garden for all of my high school friends because I'm a weirdo geek and that's the kind of thing I did in high school was I threw tea parties. It seems perfectly uh, reasonable. I thought it was at the time. Um, and, uh, and I had a whole, like, I had tubs of teacups that were all different teacups. Um, because back in those days, you would get teacups like that for, like, 50 cents at Goodwill and stuff. Oh, and collected oh them that's all. I will tell you something, though. What? In the Sonoran Desert, you can get them for about a dollar. Still? Yeah. Wow. Yes. I gotta make a trip to the desert right. to get teacups. Yeah, just for teacups. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, nice thank you to all meet for you. Thank you all for tuning in, incidentally. I don't know if anybody asked a question, but we start, got distracted, so I'm not I'm not sure how good of a Q&A this is going to be. No, we're distracted by tea <laughs> We're easily distracted by teacup conversation. <laughs> um, 
Did, did you want to have some? No. I will have a bit more. You should have a bit more. Because I have no shame. Yes. Shall yeah. I play mother? Yes, you'll play mother to yourself, I'm all afraid right. to say. No, it's all right. it's it might be a little it. strong at this juncture. Well, I so shall survive. Sorry, everybody. Pause for tea. It's very important. No, everything stops for tea. Everything stops for it. Here, let me give that another shot. I have, to, I have to show you my extremely... I'm very proud of this. So pretty. Isn't it pretty? This is my... This is my proper Victorian tea strainer. It's gorgeous. Um, acquired at great expense by inheriting it from uh, an ex. <gasps> oh, that's the best thing. I know. I clearly I, don't I need might it. Have, it might have stayed with me. So, Fallen fortunately, that ex is not the type to watch one of these. So. Even better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's in a much better home now. I think so. Yeah. I agree entirely. It gets used and loved. And shown off to the world. As it should. It's As beautiful. it should. As it should. <laughs> you know, it's, it's still lovely. It is not. It's still good. It's still good. That's good. Well, that's, sense. see, this is one of the things I, I feel, I'm, I don't know if I'm right. But I feel like the sign of a good leaf is that it doesn't get tannicky as it soaks more and more. Absolutely. Well, the really upper echelon, you can abuse them pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so. like, technically speaking, we ought to pour out and then refresh with a new uh, lot of hot water and see what the leaf takes, tastes like on a second brew when it's a new long. Right? right. No, yeah, yeah, no. I think that's what you're supposed to do. Well, and some people are very persnickety. They will not even drink that first steeping. Oh. Which I think is They'll only crime. do the second one. So they steep it and then they dump it out and then they, they steep it again. I'm like, but... All of that tea just wants to be imbibed. Yeah. Why would you abandon it? That I don't. Way? That's a good. But I do. Yeah. Now I feel kind of compelled to run a second kettle. So, yes. Madame Excuse is going to entertain you while I quickly run yeah. a second kettle. Delightful. <laughs> no. So I'm going to lean in a bit. Yeah. No. Uh, what on earth is happening? Hello. Hello. It's very nice to meet all of you. Thank you for allowing me to join you and Miss Gale for tea. We are. Honestly, just having tea and chatting Sorry, all about it. <laughs> oh, couch auction. No, there's no couch auction. Hello, Kelly. It's good to see you. I'm glad you found your way here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I believe the couch is staying here. And I'm not taking it with me. It is a nice couch. It though. is a very nice couch, but it would not fit in my airship. <laughs> <laughs> so... Right, oh, the, we're sitting on the couch. <laughs> Where is the couch, they ask. So. It, it, they think they're, com they're all think they're comedians. Well, they are delightful. Thank you. Yeah, no, hello. Oh, thank you. Lovely. Thank what you are, very what, much. What are they thanking you for? Well, they say they love my stuff and they are inspired by my costume. Yes. So Don't you love you. her hat? I, I adore this purple hat. It's one of my favorites of yours. I wore it just for you. Oh, I'm I'm all, I did. I actually thought seriously about wearing this new purple dress that I just got because I thought you might be wearing the purple hat and then we would have matched. Oh, I know. But I... I, also, I didn't think about calling you for a costume consult. <laughs> I'm always open for that sort of thing. Next time. Next yeah, no. And I thought of your wonderful fifth gender. Yes. It does match. Would be a good... Yes. It's not lavender, no. but at least it is purple. But it would match the cover. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you see, yeah. so I have lamented on lives prior to this that purple is a very difficult color to get a hold of in terms of like outfits and clothing and stuff. It is hard. So I didn't have enough to wear when I was promoting the fifth gender that matched the cover. Uh, but I did just find a brand new purple dress mm. and I ordered a purple dress off of Vishakti. So I am like actively getting purple back into my That's life. That's fantastic. It's a big step for me. No, it's uh, good. But it's taken me a long time to come around to purple because my mother was a big fan of purple in the 80s. So I have some associations. Oh, oh yes. I understand. I felt the same about pink. Ah. I too had some traumas around pink in the 80s. Yes. And yeah, not just the get... 1880s, also the 1980s. <laughs> and um, so it's only recently that I've come back round to, to, pink. to pink. Yes. And then I did make a costume that is head to toe pink. Yes. So. I, with all the ruffles. All of them. All the ruffles are on this dress of hers. No, all the ruffles. Like 35 yards it's of ruffles. Amazing. <laughs> 
pink ruffles. It's like yeah. your nod to the uh, Firefly dress. It is know? very much um, a little bit of a nod to that, and it was also done with his eye to imagining what Hawaiian shirts could have been if they were bustle dresses. <laughs> I had, there was a group, again, I'm dating myself, but back in the 90s, used to do the uh, Baycon here in the Bay Area regularly, and they did themed huge, they were a clan anachronism or something was their name, and they did Victorian Scots dress, Ooh. but too perfectly tailored to a T to the time period, but out of the most inoc like the most ridiculous fabric they could come up with. And uh -huh. they did Hawaiian shirts one year. They oh. did like full clan of like six dudes and six ladies all in like kilted Hawaiian shirted glory. It was impressive. That's beautiful. It was, yes. The, That's I beautiful. Was, I was amazed by that kind of thing. I love it. I love it entirely. So, yeah, yes. no, it's fun. That, I think, for me, is one of the most fun parts of doing Victoria on there in steampunk is... You get to be a little wild with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Just pushing pushing that boundary. Yes. They would. They yes, would have. Yes, they would have if they had the chance, I think. Absolutely. Cut, they yeah. loved colour. They did. Deeply. <laughs> Deeply. Sometimes to a degree that is shocking. Can you imagine what the Victorians would have done with neon, for <gasps> example? <laughs> I can right now! <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my uh, god! Like, highlighter neon colors! They would have loved it. Oh my god, they would have gone crazy for it. No, and swatch. Yeah, neon and swatch. Yes. Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah, I know. That's, oh. a, that's a look. That is a look. Yes, so the next convention that we are going to be at together is going to be down in San Jose in September for the Gaslight, Gaslight? Gaslight Expo. Gaslight Expo. Yeah. And uh, it is themed to an Egyptian theme this year. And so uh, I don't know about you, but I am particularly excited about that theme. Well, <laughs> and there might yes. be some gold lame coming with me to this. <laughs> so I just want you to know. I did not know that. Will you <laughs> see the costumes I'm making for the Grand Arbiter myself? But oh, I'm so excited. Gold is a key feature. Oh my gosh, you have to tell me which day you wear them and I will wear my gold. Oh, oh my god. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, they're good. I might be a little Very bit gold. more influenced by the Cleopatra movie that is strictly necessary. <laughs> no, it's so good though. It's so good. I love that movie. Then so wrong, but so good. The one with Elizabeth Taylor. She's, yes, her so outfit. Hot. I want every one of her dresses in that I'd, movie. And all of her wigs. And all of her wigs. All of them. All of them. They're so good. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so yeah. we are looking forward to this event very much uh, because of the... Uh, theme. <laughs> the theme yeah. is so good. And also it's a lovely event. Yeah. Um, and the people who attend are marvellous, but you really bring a certain something to Ooh. any event. So just having you there already elevates a lovely And experience. I get to watch the tea dueling. Yeah, oh yes. All I the just, tea I'm dueling. a very like, excited, uh, active audience member. <laughs> I just like to sit in the front row and clap. And oh yes. Giggle. And we will provide you tea. And drink tea. Yeah, no, always, it always. Is, how could you not love a sport that revolves around tea? So like good. And we do good tea for our tea. Yes, yeah, you do. We don't shy away. We no. bring some really lovely leaves to the table. Yes. And there won't just be Darjeeling. It, well, mostly it is a vehicle for dunking, so it, it can be Darjeeling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just no. kidding. No, no, we... Just I getting mean, the kettle. It is mostly a vehicle for dunking, but <laughs> we tell people, take your tea, drink it, uh, come and get refreshed. If you've dueled, you've earned a good cuppa, so... That is true. Right? That's fair. But we do have a bit of a selection. Usually some uh, gunpowder green is very popular for the martial spirit of tea dueling. I think it's mostly the name that makes it popular. <laughs> I think so. Also... <laughs> There may be some stories about how it actively explodes <laughs> and takes interns with it, which... Um, I have to show everybody oh. the leaves. Look at the leaves. Oh, those are beautiful leaves. Look at this. So this is this, this, is this mountain oolong. Look at, the, look at the size of these leaves, everyone. They're tremendous. That's a tea leaf, like a whole tea leaf. It's just, I don't know, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> 
I, I actually have not seen an oolong um, come with the leaves already. That big. I mean, that's the size of sage. Right, and they're on the stem as well. Yeah, it hasn't brewed enough. So that is unusual. Yeah, it's really, it's a fascinating blend. This but it's lovely. It's, it does have a wonderful... The scent is remarkable. Yeah. I'm, I think you're right. I think I want a perfume out of it more than anything. So should you find Ooh. yourself at a very fancy Chinese tea house, they will bring you a scenting cup with your oolong. Ah, so and you smell it. You smell it. They pour it into the scenting cup, cup then from the scenting cup into your drinking cup. And then you roll it between your hands, massaging your hands at the same time. With the leaf? With the, the scenting cup. Oh, with the scenting cup. And so you get the fragrance wow. and a hand massage. At the same time. Oh, I like this so idea. So good. It's so good. I highly recommend it. I, I was discussing with Madame Askew earlier that I feel, as a confessed tea snob, that I really don't know enough about tea to be as snobbish as I am about it. Because I don't drink the Chinese and Asian teas all that frequently. I just go for my Indian black most of the time. But you know that tea very well. I do know that tea very well, yes. I do have strong opinions on Assam. But, and you... but I ought to specify that that's where my snobbery is more than anything else. I don't really have a right to be snobbish about anything else. Well, I mean, there's always the opportunity to learn. That's true. That's and true. Indian tea is also... Very deep tradition of tea drinking. True. And Assam. It is a lovely tea. It is a lovely tea. Darjeeling is the scandal in a teacup. <laughs> Assam is, yeah. you know, the whole history of a subcontinent. Yes, true. Some of it rather dark. But then, so is Assam. Yeah, no. Uh, so, I'm going to try the second flush of this oolong that we're drinking. So here we go. All right. Lovely. Yes, it smells different. I have to say, the second time around, I'm getting rose this oh, time. Around. Lovely. Yeah. I lovely. really like that about oolongs that they change ac across the course. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Breakfast tea all day is this book. <laughs> also, a completely legit option. Yes, true. That's yeah. Well, it's just an excuse to get milk into me, really. <laughs> so do you take your breakfast tea with a bit of milk? I do. Whole milk. Oh. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. About, it's usually a mug and it's got about a quarter cup of whole milk in it. I'm, I like a strong milky tea. That's how I was raised and... No, there's nothing wrong with that. Ooh, I do like the second flush. You like it better. I think I like it better. It's not as complex, mm. but it's also not as tannic. Yeah. Wow. This is amazing. It's really remarkable. So it's very different. This is why I think I like testing a tea house on their oolongs. Yeah. Because there's so much that's going on. Yeah. So. How remarkable. Wow. Sorry, this is a very interesting experience, this oolong. I, I have to say, I, I might have I might have to start including oolongs in my life. Well, I might have to send you a couple of oolongs to try. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically. So did you know the trivia, a little trivia about the term oolong. No, tell me. So I believe I have this correct, that it means dragon's tongue. I like it. Right, and so the leaves are often rolled up. That's how these were when right. I stuck them in the pot. And so as they unfurl, it ah. sort of looks like a dragon's tongue. Oh, I like it. So I love that about oolong. <laughs> that is really, really cool. So I know and it's a wonderful tea. All of the names of the great oolongs have a story that accompanies them. Why they are called that thing. It's often lost in mythology, but it makes the cup more poetic. Yes. So my oh. favorite is um, golden water turtle. What? That's an oolong? That's wonderful. It's so good. <laughs> so my favorite of the oolongs, I should say, because I have my favorite in every variety of tea. Yeah. Except green. Except green. We've discussed our, our troubles with green. Um, it's just a very... Mm, yeah, astringent. Astringent, aggressive tea most green teas are. And there is something to be said for the rice, brown rice greens that you get in yes. with, that you eat with Chinese food, or you drink with eating Chinese food. Um, I love those. Th I think they're they're kind of like palate cleansers almost. Or there's something that that's delicious about that in a green tea, 
but as a just a sipping tea for green it doesn't it doesn't work for me I'm afraid most of the time or I should maybe say that I just haven't found the one that works for me or it's probably out there somewhere I have had a nice blend of green and black. <laughs> Angelica says that green tea is the white chocolate of teas. Oh! <laughs> quite a shocking Ooh, statement to make. <gasps> Scandal. I know. <laughs> that, that is very strong words strong about words. the green tea. <laughs> yeah, no. It, it, well, you know, it's... I really like white chocolate. I know, don't tell anybody. So I... It's a character. It is a character flaw. I am well aware that it's a profound character flaw. No, I mean it has its place, which is mostly not in people's mouths. <laughs> <laughs> mm. it says black, green, and oolong together. Really? Ooh. That sounds incredibly complicated. It does. Would you have it with milk? And and someone else is saying that they like white chocolate. Good. I'm glad I'm not alone. Not alone. <laughs> I actually indulge in white chocolate, oh, oh, right. so you're not. I think white chocolate and white tea are actually a wonderful pairing. They're because they're, white chocolate, a subtle white chocolate, is, it goes. It's it's so gentle that it goes very well with sort of a perfumey white tea. No, you're not wrong. Yeah. That's a good. A good I haven't pairing. tried it, but now I shall. I have I have lots of thoughts about pairings desserts with tea. Do you have like certain desserts that you feel like or or pay or puddings or pastries that go with certain I teas? I do. Um, I actually recently may have written a bit about pairing Girl Scout cookies with teas. I did that too! Right? So. I, I, because a lot of people will pair like whiskeys with Girl Scout cookies or beer with Girl Scout cookies and I'm like, no, 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 let us talk tea, tea with Girl Scout cookies. So, Absolutely. speak to me. So, I, of course, am very keen on thin mints. But, what tea? Aside from mint tea, you can't I treat I'm it. sorry, mint doesn't go with tea. Really. No, no, it's very hard. I normally do something like a Darjeeling, just because it's sort of... But Darjeeling has that lemony. Well, it depends on your Darjeeling. Mm -hmm. I think of it like having a little mint in your curry, and Darjeeling being Indian by way of China, <laughs> and scandal is not too bad with the thin mint. But what I found mm. really lovely, there are those shortbread cookies from the uh, New Mexico branch of Girl Scouts. They are coated in chocolate. Okay. And you can pretty much put those with every tea. Every tea, huh? I think they're called Hellos. Yeah, I don't Something know. I like remember that. the names. I, I can't remember, but shortbread coated in chocolate. Not a bad thing. No. No. That went with every tea. Yes, I can imagine. I do tend to feel like, like a, I feel like a, like a chocolatey cookie of some kind and a chocolatey, especially like a, like a Jamie Dodger or like a, uh, Jaffa cake. Oh yeah. Um, tend to go with the maltier whole black milkier, mil milkier teas, like afternoon teas and stuff like that. Um, uh, though I have very strong opinions that a snickerdoodle is the best paired with chai. I think that that is a match oh, made in heaven. Absolutely. So the, anything in the cinnamon thing. But uh, but then you get a, like a really aggressive cookie like the Girl Scouts uh, chocolate and um, caramel and coconut. Oh, one. the samosas. Sam no, that's, 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 that's an Indian food. Right. Samoas. Samoas. <laughs> Thank you. You're right. <laughs> I have samosas on the brain. <laughs> Samoas. No, they are very strong. They're very strong, and I I would even venture to say that you have to have them with coffee. <gasps> oh, the C word. <laughs> I know. Or it's just a really fortified tea. Really strong tea. Yeah. Like a breakfast tea. Yeah, a really stand-up strong Bold. Sc scotch breakfast or yeah, something. Yeah, no. Some, something they're, very... Those are a... Those are a cookie, man. They take over your mouth. All you so. taste, really, is that chocolate and, so sweet. and yeah. um, the coconut. Yeah. It's hard to get any other flavor. So. I, w I will say, as an avowed non-Earl Grey drinker, a lemony cookie with an Earl Grey is generally pretty good, actually. <laughs> like, if you're going to go for the lemon bar or the lemon George bread or the... the or the Savannah Smiles, yeah, the, which is a yes. lemony Girl Scout cookie. Then that, uh, then actually something. Or Lady Grey, if you're um, not, yeah. if you're not an, a Burger Man person. Um, 
but yeah, it is, it is, it is challenging. But I, I, I've talked about this before, but I am a fruit custard girl, so I like a trifle, I like that kind of thing, oh. and that, and that does, for me, tend to go best with a, an English breakfast. Absolutely. Yeah. Because again, you have something that sorts of strong enough to stand to up. To stand up to those fruity flavours. But not, you know override them. exactly if you and if but if you have like a fruity like a like a perfumey tea like a white tea or, or an oolong with something too fruity to eat i feel like the food overpowers the tea absolutely it's the tea these sorts of teas need something a little bit more delicate like a red bean paste absolutely or, yeah no i like a, a luna oh no what's what they called a moon cake mm. red bean moon cake yes with an oolong that it's pretty perfect. very good yes it's pretty good. Yes. Yeah. No. And I can see those the sort of toasted rice greens with the sesame ball as well. Oh. Like I feel like the fried sesame ball and that those are, that would be a very that nice, would be nice good. pairing. It has that little bit of nuttiness. Yes, but it's exactly. Not too much. Precisely, and it mm. will cut the cut the uh, grassiness of the green a little bit with the sweet of the sesame. Oh, you so. need something. To you got something. Yes. It's and the grease. Like drinking hay. <laughs> No, I really, I know that is a character flaw. As someone who loves so much tea that I just cannot get into the green traditions. But there's a lot of everything else. There is, there's quite a range. There's quite a range, I have to say. There's, I, I just learned about golden leaf tea recently. Oh. Which I don't know, I'm assuming it belongs to the oolong tradition. Probably. But, um, but I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't try it and I'm regretting it. I was in Des Moines and we went to a tea shop and they had a golden leaf and I have never even heard of this before and I should have gotten some to try but I didn't. Another time. Oh, book is men mentioning Nilla wafers, which yes, I can see those as a oh. good pairing to a subtler yes. tea like an oolong, uh, like a like a just a gentle. They're sweet, which but I not think is, too sweet. Is the point of shortbread, yes. right? Short. The thing about shortbread is it pretty much just goes with every everything. It's perfect with all tea. Yeah, shortbread is. Personally, my favourite. <laughs> Do you sort make it? Of, I have made it, mm. and I'm on the hunt for the perfect oatmeal shortbread recipe, because oaty shortbread is a Scottish thing. Okay. And it's very good. Is it? So there's a little shop in this town called Cooper, which is north of Edinburgh, and they make these gorgeous oaty shortbreads. Wow. That are heavenly. I cannot be left alone with them. <laughs> so it's it's a bit nuttier than your normal shortbreads. Which and, I would like, I think. And a bit, um, it's still very tender, like a good shortbread, but slightly toothier. Mm. They're so good. They're mm. so good. Oh no, it's such a Scottish thing. All right, well, as some of you may know that I'm off to Scotland in August. So, uh, and no, anybody tuning in from there, I'm not doing any actual events in Scotland. Sorry, it's vacation time. Uh, but maybe I'll try and track down an Oti OT, OT shortbread. They're so good. Two teacups up. <laughs> so, yeah. Two, two teacups up. Is that your rating system? That is my rating system. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. More teacups, the better. Yes. And if they're full teacups, we're absolutely at the top. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, I... I so, uh, Kelly is joking about field trips, and I'm thinking... Uh, one of the things, I've, I've talked about this before, but one of my dreams is someday to do a trip where it's just me and a bunch of you and all we do is go to tea houses and old bookstores and fabulous libraries. And that's just, we just go around parts of Europe, wherever we feel like, and that's what we do. That we sounds just perfect. Do tea and books, tea and books, tea and books. <laughs> I don't that think you be... really need anything else, no, do you? No, what more do you need in life, really? Well, some young people to carry your books. Yes, it's true. Assistants. Minions. Yeah. Minions. Minions. Interns. Minions and turns. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> but otherwise, no, you need nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. No. And on that note, I think we'll we'll end this live, but it was fun talking to you with you all. I'm, I'm... So nice to meet all of you. Yes, please Thank check you. Madame Miskew out. She's she's here on the Facebooks. Go say hi to her. Yes, um, please. Look up, look up Tea Dueling. You will not be sorry. It's 
fantastically hilarious. Thank you. Um, yes, and I will see you all. The next live that I have, the actual official next live I have is, I know, is August 6th. Uh, it is, I'm going to be on the weekend after that, which is whatever that is, the 12th or something. It's on my webpage. Um, and it's here, it's on this page's events and everything. And that's the official Reticence launch conversation. <gasps> so, so exciting. We will be talking about the last book in the series. So I'll see you all then. And I will be wearing red, obviously, like full red, because well, yes. I have to match the cover. It's perfect. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Goodbye.